Thank you. As children, we are naturally curious. And as far back as I remember, I have been asking questions about everything in my world. Who invented what? Why did they invent that? How did they invent that? So the driving force for my creativity has always been my curiosity. And I believe I share that with all of you sitting here today. In fact, humans have been fascinated by creativity ever since our existence. Creativity is about growth, and I'm going to share my journey in the research world with you, showing you what results I found on how to make the organization grow. Um, so basically, the idea, the question that I asked myself when I was doing my research, and still am doing, is that how can we combine a way that, how can we create a way that combines profit for the organization with well-being for the individual? Can we make the individuals grow by using their creativity? And how can we apply that at our work? Now, the answer to those questions are illustrated in this box, showing that creativity needs uh, in order for the box to grow. The box exists at a market, the market is expanding, and the, bo the box, which is a metaphor for the organization, needs to expand with the market. We need to deliver innovation continuously, implemented creativity. What was an innovation in 2001 is not an innovation today. It's merely a standard. So my research shows that creativity is not a quick fix. It takes persistence, it takes time, it takes motivation and engagement. And it emerges with the interaction between leadership, climate, culture, the individuals, their experiences, their knowledge and their motivation. And together, these uh, elements create uh, creativity. So how can we make the box grow? Uh, basically, well, at least there are two ways. We can make the box grow from the inside. Then we work with uh, incremental innovation, adaptive creativity, basically like developing the iPhone 4 to the iPhone 5. Or we can uh, go outside the box to create radical creativity, innovative uh, ideas that change the world, that change the organizations. And research is showing that both types of creativity are important. We need them both in order to survive, because that's basically what creativity is all about, survive at the market. So you could say that creativity is like a dimmer, creating different shades, different nuances, different lights uh, by Ad by creating adaptive creativity, radical creativity, and so on and so on. The frames of the box need to evolve all the time, constantly. And for that, we need an adaptive and flexible organization. Why do we need to make the box grow? This is 10 years of research illustrated in the simple graph showing that the more we use our creativity at work, the more we implement it, the better is our economy and well-being. Now, isn't that great? Creativity is a balance between control and freedom. If we give too much freedom, it can create too much chaos. But we don't want that in organizations. We want result. And too much control can kill the creative flow very easily. So in this sense, the more we are creative, the better is our well-being, and the more profit we can create for the organization. In fact, uh, this is one of the explanations for why Swedes have been so successful. Swedes have been able to produce so many innovative and successful brands compared to, for example, countries like India, which is much bigger in size. Uh, so the explanation lies in here. Swedes have historically been putting a lot of emphasis on their wealth, the health and uh, creativity of their employees. They're stimulating that, giving it inspiration. And so this is really, really important because I'm suggesting that by being creative, we can achieve well-being, but we can also achieve economical profit and we can achieve decreasing our stress levels at workplace. So how do we create this healthy, innovative organization? One of the important things to begin with is by creating conditions for creativity, creating a climate that supports uh, creativity and innovation. 
Now, there are many, many factors contributing to this. Due to lack of time, I will only take two of them. And let's begin by visibility. Innovations and our creativity needs to be visualized at our work. Now, interviews, questionnaire with over 100 and 100 and 100 employees show the same thing. The creative people, those who are motivated by their creativity, are not motivated by extra $10,000 in their pay. Well, maybe not 10,000, but 1,000. <laughs> They're motivated by seeing their products, their efforts, their contributions visualized. It can be, for example, putting out the product in the hall in the organization, putting it out in the coffee room, uh, or just somehow illustrating the products or the services, because that way they can see that they can, they can see their contributions. And a question that I want you to take with you is how often does your company visualize your efforts, your contribution to the organization, your creative ideas? So visuali to visualize is very, very important. Another aspect that we have seen when studying these highly creative and innovative organizations is that they emphasize trial and error. It's very, very important. When we are very good at encouraging children to learn by trial and error. And thi so this can also be found in these organizations. They encourage risk taking, they encourage experimenting, and they have also high tolerance for failure. Now that's, that's really, really important, to accept failure as a vital and important part of the creative process. Because it's very hard to succeed with something new without failing several times on the way. And compare this with the child who wants to learn to go. So the child sets that as a goal. I want to learn to walk. And in order to achieve the goal, the child needs to accept that she will fall and stumble, uh, not one time, not two times, but several times along the way. And in the best case, the child would use that as a memory for the next attempt. Now, the interesting thing here is that we as adults are quick to encourage and support the child. And our encouragement gives the child the confidence to make another try and another try and another try. And that's how creative leadership should function in organization as well. We should encourage people when they try out new things. Simple as that. Over 100 of interviews with leaders that are found in creative organizations show that they have some, some basic stuff in common. And these are portrayed here in this slide. Uh, one of these uh, ideas or the elements identified is that creative leaders that can make the box grow and can make individuals grow is that they are relation-oriented. They have a genuine and authentic concern for the health and uh, well-being of their employee. At the same time, as they are change agents, they promote change, they promote creativity, they promote their employees and encourage them to try out different alternatives, different ideas, uh, and not just go by routines. They encourage them to interact with other people, to interact with their environment, uh, because they have realized, just as I have, uh, scientific uh, proof in my uh, research that we get our most creative ideas when we interact with other people. And today change is a norm, a norm so we need to constantly uh, be aware of that. And these leaders are also very good at provoking their employees, provoking new competences, asking them, is there another way to achieve this? How come that you dealt with this issue in this way. They are asking questions, making the uh, employee uh, question their own um, processes, because we know that the most creative organizations question their processes. Now, of course, it's not good to question too much, but we know that the creative organizations, the highly creative organizations, they question their processes much, much more than the stagnated organizations. And we all know what happens the minute we stop questioning ourselves, right? We become lazy and comfortable, and we take our success uh, for granted. And that 
is one of the major, major, major reasons for why successful companies suddenly fall. They stop questioning themselves. So this is, this is really, really important. Another aspect that I have seen important for creative leadership is that uh, they make the individuals realize how they contribute to the organization. They are very, very concerned with helping their employees get the big picture. Now that's very important to realize how am I contributing the organi organization? How is my behavior affecting other people in the organization? And believe it or not, <laughs> but in some organizations where creativity is um, hindered, you don't see this. When I ask the leaders, do you convey uh, the, the whole picture to your uh, employees and what do they say? Yes. And then I go and ask their employees, do you know your place in this organization? No. That's scary. This means that there is a discrepancy here between what the leaders think and what the employees experience. So, the one important thing if the leader wants to begin to create a creative climate, a creative organization, is to start listen. Listen to your employees. They have already the ideas. Creativity is, as it is a potential that resides within all of us. So the ideas are most probably already there, but we just need someone that listens and encourages us to bring forward these ideas. And uh, I have, in my research, developed this tool for managers, leaders. It's a tool providing them with knowledge and insight in how to make the box grow and uh, achieve new goals, new challenges, and make the employees uh, feel great about being in that organization. So when doing my interviews and uh, observing the workplaces, I saw that well, most workplaces function like a marionette theater. And we all have different roles. And of course, these roles can vary depending on which context we exist in. Uh, and these are the basic roles that I saw. We have the politician who likes to talk a lot, but there is no action. And we have the cannibal who really doesn't trust uh, his or her own creativity. So therefore, it's much easier to steal from another department. And uh, so these are roles. They have all their strengths and weaknesses. The basic idea here is, is that we are different. We bring different energy into the organization that impacts and influences our creativity. And the role for the manager is to transform this energy to something constructive. Uh, so, for example, the cannibal doesn't have a faith in his or her own creativity, steals from the next person. Now, in organization, that is not good. Uh, so how can the manager channelize this person's energy? Send them to the competitor. And Another, a positive role here is the optimist. Uh, optimist is a yes-sayer, sees opportunities in about everything. Now, imagine I am at a workplace and I am an opportunist uh, or optimist, and someone approaches me and says, help, help, H our whole department has burned down. And how do I reply to that? If I am an optimist, well, that's great. That's great, now we can rebuild the department as we want to. Uh, so this is a very necessary role for the climate, but of course the downside of this role is that uh, this role might become too optimistic and uh, lose faith of realists. And another role is the criticizer, which a lot of us recognize, uh, especially if we come from the university. Uh, so, Crit the criticizer has uh, extremely good competence in seeing faults in everything. Now, that's a very good ability, but you should use it in the right phase of creativity. So in the beginning of the creativity, the uh, criticizer might kill the creative flow. 
So that's not a good position to put him or her in. But in the later phases of creativity, where you need to evaluate your ideas, this is a very good role to use. So do you get an idea of how these roles function? The basic idea is that we are different and we should use our differences as a strength and channelize our creativity through these differences. I have developed a questionnaire and that you can download, it's free. And the question is, is your company creative or not? If you're curious, do the test and download the manual at frida.se. There are 10 questions. I have highlighted the most important question here. And it is it allowed to fail at your workplace? Now, some of the leaders that I work with realize that this is really, really important. Some even double their failure rate as they realize that this is a good way to achieve success. And one easy way, one idea that I'm going to share with you uh, to achieve this is to, uh, along with having the best idea of the month, also have the worst idea of the month. And reward that with, for example, exchanging the leader exchanging the office with the person who uh, got the worst idea of the month, or giving them their parking space. So with very little means, you can actually create a tolerant climate, fostering your ideas, fostering differences, fostering alternative ways of looking at things, fostering change. Summarized, the space and opportunity to develop ideas is more motivating than a thousand kroner extra in pay. Thank you.